Hi, today I'm going to talk about book clubs and book club guides or reading guides for book groups because I've heard that there's a movie out and it looks really good called Book Club. I'm very excited to see that. But I've always been fascinated by the idea of people getting together to discuss a book and sometimes I get invited to go to book clubs which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm going to share with you some of the sort of questions that I might get asked but also I want to find out from you if you have a reading guide for your book club what sort of things do you want? What helps you? What sort of discussion points or questions um, do you like in those guides? What's helpful for you? Um, on my website, I do have reading guides uh, for book clubs, and I'm going to tell you a bit, little bit about those and the sort of things that you might find there. Um, sometimes I do questions and answers. Uh, sometimes I will give you backgrounds on how I've written the books. Um, the inspiration for the books, uh, there are photographs usually, things about the settings, the place and the time. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about the books, um, the website's a good place to look. But let's have a look at a reading guide for um, The Witch's Daughter and see how I came up with the things that I thought might be helpful and interesting for you. So if you go to my website and click on the quill and ink little um, picture on, on the landing page, you'll find that that takes you through to information about the books and specifically for book clubs. Um, but at this point I'd quite like to find out if you have book clubs that involve wine or book clubs that involve tea or coffee because I think they're very different. Um, I've been to some where once the wine gets going the book club <laughs> takes on a very different sort of tone to the ones with the tea and cake but I like them both. Uh, do you find that you prefer to have book clubs that really stick to discussion about the books or do you quite like it when they veer off into other things? And have you formed lasting friendships through your book clubs and book groups? I'd like to know that too, so you can put that in the comments and let us know. Um, and I'll be looking at different books in more depth, so look out for videos that specifically deal with my different books and the, and the background of those and how I came to write them. So for this one, if we're gonna look at the Witch's Daughter questions and answers first. I've, I, I did an interview, and if you go on to the, this page, you'll find, um, an interview about my writing of the book. I tried to think of things that were, some of them are to do with the characters, some of them are to do with the setting, um, but again I'd like to know what you look for. So I'll just give you some of the character questions that I asked. I asked, I asked you about Gideon. Gideon's quite a dark character in the book obviously, a very dark character, um, but I'm thinking quite a lot of you will be drawn to him and that's an interest of mine. Why do we like these bad boys even in fiction? Um, why are we attracted to dark characters? Um, what do you think it is? Uh, I don't really have an answer for that one myself, um, or at least I have different theories, and I try not to live out those theories, but um, I'm sure we've all been there. Feel free to share your experiences, but I'm really looking for why you think people like dark characters in fiction. That's a question that um, usually kicks off quite a lot of discussion in the book groups that I've been to. So why is Gideon not exactly likeable, but why do we do we fancy him? Are we attracted to him? It's different from liking someone. And what is it about a dark character that attracts particularly female readers? So that's one question. The witch trials in the book are quite detailed and there are descriptions of some of the punishments and the sentences that are carried out for the witches that were tried um, in the early part of the 17th century. How did you react to that? That's another question that I wanted to ask and that tends to get people thinking along historical lines and of course it's very difficult when you're reading historical fiction not to put like a modern perspective on the events. We think with our 21st century, some of us are still stuck in the 20th century, but with our modern mindsets and our modern traditions and the acceptable way that society is now and obviously it was very different 400 years ago. So how did the witch trials affect your thinking and affect how you felt about the book? Okay, um, that's another question that's there. What else have we got? Names. Names play a very important part in this book um, for all sorts of reasons and there's a video, I'll link it in the cards, there about creating names for your characters and how I do it and how you might do it. and. Did you have a favourite name in this book? Were there names that you found you thought could have been better? If so, what would you have put in there? Um, were there some that stuck with you? 
I always think it's interesting if you come across your own name in a book and that certainly affects my, I don't, doesn't happen very often with Paula, I don't know, maybe it happens more often with other names, but it does seem to affect the way you read the story. And actually that's a point when you're submitting work too, you can come unstuck. I once had a book that um, an editor was interested in, but they actually asked me to change the name of one of the main characters because it was the name of their mother-in-law. So, yeah, names. Okay, there's a relationship in here between Elizabeth and Tegan that is very central to the story. It's not quite a mother-daughter relationship, but it is that um, sort of mentor and protege, or um, like a, a favorite aunt, or maybe even a much older sister, or just an older friend relating to a younger person and nurturing that young person as they become an adult, and how are they going to make that step into independence and all the things they have to deal with. Um, in my new book, The Little Shop of Found Things, mother-daughter relationships are very central to the theme of the book and a thread that runs through the whole series. But what did you think about the relationship between Elizabeth and Tegan in this book? Because Elizabeth doesn't have any children for all sorts of complicated reasons. So how do you think that influenced how she coped with Tegan? I mean, apart from the normal aspects of an older person dealing with a teenager, um, what did you think of the relationship between Elizabeth and Tegan in this book? One of the other things I ask about in the reading guide is about the setting of Passchendaele. I use the First World War as one of the times that Elizabeth visits and um, works as a nurse in the war. And that was a very interesting piece of history for me to research for the book. I really enjoyed it, if enjoy is the right word, because it was quite harrowing and I put a lot of that into the story and in fact my editors did ask me to take some of it out because they felt it was a little bit too strong for the tone of the book but I felt that would be um, not being honest about what happened and, and the character's experience that she would have had so in the end we did keep in some really quite brutal things and interestingly although the humans suffer a lot in that part of the story it's the suffering of the horses that I get the most comments about and the most questions about but it was based on the incident I'm referring to in that in that section it was based on a real event that happened um, I read a lot of transcripts of people's experiences soldiers experiences in the war and nurses experiences and the one with the horses was based on a real event obviously I fictionalized it but the the main bits of it that you will know if you've read the book and I don't want to give any spoilers here um, it was true and I felt strongly that that sort of thing needed to be kept in so how did the Passchendaele section of the book affect you um, did you think the tone was was right did you find it too strong or do you think that made the book more powerful I'd be, be interested to hear that so you know again let us know what you think in the comments and one of the other questions I asked was put yourself in Elizabeth's position what would you have done differently? Um, because Elizabeth, as you know, is near immortal when she writes her Book of Shadows in The Witch's Daughter, right at, at the beginning of the book, she tells you that she's 380 something years old. How do you think you would have behaved differently if you'd been Elizabeth? She has a lot of things to cope with, um, a lot of loneliness. She's gonna watch other people that she forms attachments to grow old and die and she's gonna move on. Um, that's made making friends very difficult, having a family impossible. So what would you have done in her position? Are there things that you think you would have done differently? Okay, so that's just a few of the questions that I've put on the reading guide on the website and in the back of some of the books, in fact, for um, The Witch's Daughter, and I will be doing um, reading guides for the other books as well. Please tell me about your experiences of book clubs. I'd love to hear them. I can't wait to see the movie, I'm really looking forward to it and maybe we'll have a, um, a little chat about the movie after we've seen it and I'd like to get your comments and see how it compares to the book clubs that, that you have. So, happy reading.